I'm not a, an imam, which is an equivalent of a rabbi in Judaism. I am an engineer by education. I have a lot of interest in my faith. I say shalom and you'll say assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And what little I know, I make an attempt to explain to others. And if that helps us become better neighbors, we can build better communities, we can be good citizens, and I think we can promote brotherhood and sisterhood wherever we live. And that's an attempt today that I'd like to make with you. My name, you can spell as Zia. You can call me by my first name, Zia. That's very easy. And uh, I will be very disappointed that after 25 minutes of this presentation, which I'll make, that if I'm not asked any questions. <laughs> The United States represents the highest level of religious freedom and religious pluralism of anywhere in the world. Whether you're a Mormon or a Muslim or a Catholic, whatever it is that you might be, you don't have, the, if, if I don't have those freedoms, ultimately you don't. So we together have to work and protect the freedoms for all of us. We moved to Morhees uh, because I liked the, the diversity that it offered. At that time, there were not many people here. There were roughly about 6,000 people living here. Uh, and now there are, what I'm told statistically, about uh, 28,000 people. Again, this is Harry Platt calling from Platt Memorial Chapels. Hi, how are you? Voorhees has always been known as a family town uh, because of our school system, because of the kind of people who are moving into town to give their children and their families a very close-knit family community. Uh, our neighborhoods are very close. There is a large uh, sports community in Voorhees Township, and it really opens up to everyone who wants to be a part of a very family-oriented community. It's very diverse. There are 11 percent, it may be higher, of um, minorities in the township. I think people choose to come to the area because of that. In suburban areas, life is very much independent. Everybody comes to their house. I think the connectedness is not there as much. I find that uh, people come and they open their garage door, they get in, and I don't find the interactions as being as active. If we would gather in somebody's house for a somebody's birthday party, we would pray in the basement, in the living room, in the family room. In 1994, we were able to acquire a community center in Palmyra. We called it the Islamic Center of South Jersey. And that's where we would go. We realized that, that that's too far, that we cannot really offer our prayers there, five prayers there, because most of us live on this side. Good morning. Hey, Zia, how are you? How are you? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum yeah. Bright sunny day today, isn't it? Sure is. Landscaping looks beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you. I think it's coming out very nice. Yeah, it's really filled yeah. in. Please come on in. Take my shoes off. Okay. Since we started mm -hmm. this coalition from uh, our house, maybe it will be a good idea to, to have a meeting there. I think we, we should have it in the evening. Um, okay, okay. And we could tell the people that we'll email them the final uh, okay. determination, because I do have a lot of email addresses. Okay. I have lived in this community for over 28 years, and over all those years, we always felt the need for having a mosque here, 
so we could offer our five time prayers there. As you know, we can offer these prayers any place, but, but saying them in a mosque is, uh, ha has a lot of advantage in terms of uh, building a community. And so we started looking for different projects, uh, different locations, and we finally found one on uh, Lafayette Avenue. There were two structures on the site. Um, there was a brick Victorian house, and that was really hard by Berlin Haddonfield Road. And then there was another sort of a nondescript one, one and a half story commercial structure um, back farther on Lafayette Road. And the property had been vacant for, I think, for anywhere from 10 to 20 years, and that was a roadhouse at one time. And then had to convert it to offices, and the roof had caved in in sections, the floor had caved in in sections. We thought that the neighborhood and the people and the township would be very happy that somebody is going to take ownership of this and convert this into a place of worship for God. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. It did occur to me that the community may have a, a negative response and a response that was not based on the people who are involved. Uh, was very difficult to overcome, very difficult to look past the perception and look at the reality of who these people were. I practice a religion that's in the minority in this country, Buddhism, and I would not want to have to go through a similar experience myself. So I felt like the community need to step forward in support of the people that were just trying to build a religious home. There are moderate Muslims who vociferously condemn terrorism of any kind. Of their understanding, their belief in Islam as a faith of peace. You do not speak for me. You who soak yourselves in blood are far from the Prophet's mantle. You do not speak for me. You who do not read, do not live by his law. You do not speak for me. You who do not know and kill, murder your own souls. You blew up a young girl Her mother's heart will bleed forever. Her father broken. What good have you done? The philosophy that supports and encourages jihad around the world against Americans came to live here in New Jersey and threaten the lives of our citizens through these defendants. Explaining to the community after the Fort Dick incident made me feel like, why do I have to apologize for my religion? In Islam, every ritual of worship is designed to bring you back to your morality, bring you back to being good human beings, and bring you back to righteousness. If some extremist makes a statement, it goes all the way around the world, you know. A moderate makes a statement and, and it's ignored. You know, people often ask us, well, why don't you speak up? We do speak up, but we're often ignored. Because of you, I am reviled. Because of you, your own people suffer. You do not speak for me or the sweetness of my God. You do not speak for me. I don't believe that, that if you're a good Muslim that you have to be radical. Since I've known Zia, I see him as a person who is deeply committed to his faith, wants a place for Muslims where they could come and pray every day. They had to prove that it was a beneficial use to our community, first of all, to have this facility there. That was the first stage of it called the use variance. Most of the projects we saw before us were called sheds and decks. We never had a mosque come before it, and I believe that this was the first religious use to come before the, the people on this particular board. Most townships 
and even at the level of state or even at the level of federal. They are very used to the organization of a church. Because there, of course, there have been more churches here than they have in mosques. So they were trying to relate everything to what a church does. And then, then they're trying to, in the context of that, they want to understand how a mosque functions. One of the frustrating things about this project was to, to discover that there, uh, there was not a lot written on, on, uh, on you know, how to approve a mosque in America. Um, you know, the things that go into uh, approving religious spaces has to, you know, are all built upon a very Western model, if you will, where inside this building there are seats. You call them pews, you call them seats, you call it an auditorium, but there's some place where a body sits. So you can basically just rack and stack your numbers out from that to know that, okay, if, if this is the size of your community, this is the size of your building, this is the, the number of parking spaces you have to have. I mean, everything flows from that point where we say there is a seat. Well, there's no seat as such in a, in a Muslim mosque. I learned about the Voorhees Mosque from uh, news releases about flyers, anonymous flyers, that were condemning it, opposing it, and uh, making claims of terrorism and the like. This is the thing that really drew me to go to the meeting. I felt that this was really unfair to the applicant and that somebody needed to be at the zoning board hearing to present a different opinion. At the April 3, 2003 zoning board meeting, the lead applicant for the Muslim American community testified that there is no formal organization of the Muslim faith. Thus, there is no leader who evaluates the members and holds them accountable to their beliefs and behavior. This creates an environment where Muslim worshipers who are extremists and radicals can pray side by side with conservative believers. These extremists and radicals could include individuals with connections to terrorists. This went to hundreds of people yeah. all over the town. Right, in my neighborhood, which isn't by the mosque. I was disgusted by the flyer that went around. I was also embarrassed that this came out of what, what I pres I, I'm guessing would be a Voorhees resident in a Voorhees neighborhood, who I view as being you know, the top of the top, <laughs> uh, was so narrow-minded and, and looking and writing those kind of things and putting it out to the community. It was hurtful uh, to anyone in any religion to have that uh, being said and being passed around. Mm -hmm. Hello. So good to see you. Hello. Nice to see you. So the fact is that flyer did bring out another part of, of the community, people who otherwise would not have never been engaged. Uh, typically, the people who are engaged in a particular application are those who are directly affected. These people were not necessarily directly affected, but they still wanted to create something here out of uh, out of out of the uh, out of the uh, the situation. Um, they were very much interested in uh, cross cultural dialogue, and um, very much believed in the strength of a diverse community. And there were freedom of religion uh, people involved in it too. The first of two planes crashed here. The drama started, as you said, just before nine. Two airplanes. The is absolutely a horrific one. You have people. There is evidence that this is a terrorist-related attack. The Voorhees project uh, came right after 9/11. Maybe the severity of uh, the issues were there uh, in terms of the perception that existed against Muslims. People were devastated about September 11th in Voorhees Township, just like they were, I think, throughout New Jersey. We felt very vulnerable. People lost friends. It was apparently common for people to commute to Manhattan, for people to go up to New York for all kinds of things. And so what had happened on September 11th was extremely personal to the people here. Uh, there was still, a, a, I would say, a heightened fear of terrorism because so many people unfortunately equate Islam with terrorism and there was an undercurrent of fear uh, as regards who was this particular community, where were they from, and what does their religious 
sentiment uh, bring uh, to the local community. The world changed on September the 11th. September 11th taught us can strike our own cities. That we must confront the new dangerous threats. No longer protect America from the dangers of this world. The most dangerous threat of our times. By daily vigilance at home. And we must confront those threats before it's too late. People were uh, reacting in a, in a, you know, to the, to the anti-Muslim fervor of the day. Think about where we were in this point in time. We were still you know, 14, 15 months away from suffering through um, the attack in New York City and Washington, D.C. that was 9-11, okay? Uh, we are now being told by our government officials that we should be vigilant without being vigilantes. There was, a, um, there was a, essentially a, a, a whole sort of uh, patriotic distrust of, of anything that didn't seem to be right. You still see signs in, in, um, in New York City Transit. If you see something, say something. There's still that you've got to be able to be the eyes and ears of your government out there. All right? So people were responding in what they thought was a very patriotic way. It seemed to me that the Muslims after September 11th became the new minority that it was OK to pick on and fear and make derogatory comments about. There was a lot of public sentiment. There was a lot of public reaction. And the number of questions we did not, I personally did not anticipate going in that it will be scrutinized to this extent. What's your projected population? The more families, the better. Would having a facility here in Voorhees be an attraction? What is the number of places that one could sit to indicate number of people? How do we do this calculation? I went there with this assumption that here is a property that has been abandoned for so many years, that the township and the, and the residents will be very pleased that somebody's going to do something there. That was the assumption I went under. So it was a, a little bit of a, a, a shock to me, the, the reaction I saw there. The room was electric. It would be electric for uh, the entire evening. And I remember that, uh, you know, that, that feeling, that sort of anxiety would sort of pervade the room. Uh, we, would, we would begin to feel it while we're still in caucus in, in, in the back room there. And then we had to come out and face that. And uh, now I don't want to say people, people were not here with torches and pitchforks, OK? That was not the scene. But they were agitated, and they were highly energized, and they were angry. I live directly behind that facility. I want this board to guarantee me that if I'm in my backyard and I'm playing with my kids, that nobody's going to drive past that mosque and shoot a bullet through it. Can you guarantee me that? Can you? I will hold this board personally responsible on my children, and I swear to God as my witness, anything happens to my children, and I will do everything in my power to make your lives a living hell. Lori Volpe phoned me very upset uh, one day at the church and said that she had been at a zoning meeting in Voorhees and had witnessed uh, something that made her very uncomfortable. In short, was asking me, well, what can we do? Nice to see you. I want to thank you guys for all coming out here tonight. It's been a while since we've seen each other, and it's nice to be back together. The coalition held meetings to discuss a strategy for supporting the mosque. We contacted media outlets and tried to generate some publicity about it. Uh, we also wrote letters to the editor. And then it became a very public matter, and once that happened, other people got on board. We know that so many of the qualities that make us good, that sometimes in excess, they spill over into areas that we should not tread. And finally, lest we say it was Moses' fault, one sort of the other. We should remember that as a community, some are guilty, but all are responsible. We decided to get involved because Jews have always been concerned about discrimination, about minority rights. Jews have uh, 
always been a minority, whether it is being in the Middle East, in Europe, or here in the United States. And we know that if um, other minorities will be unfairly targeted, Jews can be as well. We had heard both the Jewish community, the Catholic community. Primarily, we heard from our other Christian communities, uh, the Unitarians, etc., that there was opposition in Voorhees, and so the Jewish community and the Catholic community then got on board. There is a theme that runs through all three readings today, and upon reflecting, I thought there's three words that really capture the spirit of our readings. And those three words are very powerful words indeed. I am sorry. Three words that are not always easy to speak when you think of it. In our own way, the Catholic community was trying to really advocate tolerance and, and understanding. We are going to a cultural diversity event. It's called the International Night. I, I think it's so beautiful that uh, as diverse as we are, that we are able to appreciate and value other people. See, we all come in different shapes and forms, but you know, there is a lot in common That's between us that keeps us bonded together. I was here a few years ago just about two weeks after the terrible events of 9-11. This is the best way to fight terrorism, to show that we're all different and we're all exactly the same. Well, we've always had this dilemma in this country of integrating new people and the people who are already here being somewhat afraid and somewhat hostile. That's part of the strange duality of Americanism, that we have embraced immigration and been fearful of immigration at the same time. You know, there was quite a bit of the neighbors saying that parking would be such a problem and traffic would be such a problem. Has that created any problem at all? Absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Most people who called me didn't come out and say, I don't want this kind okay. of religious building in my neighborhood. They didn't come out and say that, but they, they put things in terms of traffic issues and, and use and sight lines and lights and so forth. I was really surprised at the, uh, at the outcry in the community on the part of neighbors. A lot of the residents were up at arms for the wrong reasons, for religious reasons. And so they were trying to find anything that they could to, uh, to keep the mosque from becoming a reality. The issue was zoning. Did they have enough parking to support the congregation? And the answer is no. You can calculate the amount of space that a person takes up when they worship. And that's where I come from, an engineering background, that they need a space so wide and so long, so many square foot per person, divide that into the square footage in the room, and you would come up with um, about 200 people can fit into that room. But if we can twist it around and get everybody off of that topic and make it a religious issue, do they have a right to congregate and pray? And the answer is yeah, and I, I would agree with anyone on that. They have a right to have a place to worship. But they should also have the parking spaces to support that. At the initial meetings, there was much more concern expressed than I had seen on any other application I had ever been involved with in Voorhees Township. And uh, actually the most, most concerned I've ever seen in any project that I have been involved with in over 25 years now. It should not have gotten to that point. No. It's a zoning no. board yeah. hearing. Whether you um, comply with a land use law and the ordinances should be pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions which were asked were absolutely insulting. What is, uh, I'm missing something, what is the Ramadan? And you really felt like saying, Please go home and Google www.islam.com because it will be all explained very clearly in the first three paragraphs. People really needed to get themselves expressed. They needed to be heard, and this was the forum to get it done. I was asked a couple of times, 
do you really know who these people are? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, and my sister has permission to marry into them. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the major question that was asked. What are you going to do when you find out that it's really a terrorist cell? How are you going to feel about this then, Joan? I had a small talk with the, uh, one of the members of the zoning board during the recess, and they, they told me exactly that. They said, supposedly these have uh, turned out to be terrorists that congregating there. Mm -hmm. And what I told them is, well, at least you know who they are, and they're all in one place. <laughs> <laughs> you win. <laughs> I guess it kind of surprised me a little bit when, after the fact, I had told some folks that I was had been involved with this, and there was a lot of that opposition, and mm -hmm. and those fears came through, like, what if they're terrorists? And look at 9/11. My son was in one of the towers. When I told my son what I was doing, he said, "Good, Dad." They have rights, too. And that was very, very encouraging to me. Mm. Let me say that it was the worst day of my life, waiting to find out whether or not he was alive or not. And he was one of the fortunate ones. But I have never really connected what happened at the Trade Center with ISM. The issue here is that Islam is, means peace. The very word means peace. It, and, and the very word means submit to the will of God. Now, is the will of God to go kill other people? That is a total misunderstanding. Religion does not promote whatsoever, in fact, condemns. It's not religion per se that separates people. Anything can be used to separate people when people have a mind to be separated. Islam sees itself as a continuation of what is true in Judaism and Christianity. We worship the same God, and Abraham is, you know, the father of all of those religions. This house of God that will rise up will be for really all of us a sign that all glory, honor, and praise goes to God and to him alone, and that we are all his children. And we all share mystically in the faith revealed uh, through Abraham to all of us. We all share in that, and we all worship the God who created us. For a number of years, the Catholic community here in South Jersey has been forging a very close bond of friendship and dialogue with the Jewish community. And we then began reaching out to the Muslim community, giving a, a greater understanding and a recognition of the similarities between the teachings of Islam and Judaism and Christianity. We're all from the same religious branch. We're all essentially an Old Testament uh, faith. Uh, and the Koran embraces Judaism and Christianity as people of the book. There's so much fighting and, and war going on, uh, different religions hating each other, and we as individuals, we look at it in despair and say, what can we do? All I could do is here in my own community. I believe that you have to stand up and, and let your voice be heard. Um, that, you know, that comes out of Quaker tradition. When I came out the first night, my wife Carol said to me, what's it about? And I said, Kyle is involved in some kind of a zoning thing and she thinks I ought to be interested in it. And I said, I don't know. And when I got home and walked in, of course, my wife is Jewish. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, well, what's it all about? I said, I'm going to help build a mosque. <laughs>
after they got their approvals, we had a period where another incident came up, and that was that they were building and it was not matching the drawings that we had seen at the planning board. Their original application says they're going to put a different kind of window treatment in there and make it look like some kind of religious use, not overtly Muslim, and this is no signs outside, and, uh, and this is where we're going to have our mosque. They went back, I guess it must have been two or three more times, uh, with new plans. I see it, sorry. There was uh, some modification to the building layout, uh, the, the exterior design of the building, which we didn't think was all that problematic, but uh, was viewed by the board as, as being a, a bigger issue than I had uh, anticipated. Well, we had one change where we were, were going to try to put a cupola on the top of the prayer hall to get some light in that way, and, and there was some objection to that. This was egregious to the opposition who felt that this uh, cupola or a minaret was going to have some power, uh, you know, it'd be a statement of power, I guess, uh, over the community. There were 10 revisions done to the plan during the course of the approval process. I was surprised by the vehemence of, of, the, of the arguments. It was not just a one meeting event. This same energy came back every month. Uh, and it lasted, and it lasted, and it lasted. After months of waiting, a Muslim group in southern New Jersey has finally won approval for a new mosque. The Voorhees Zoning Board voted to allow this building to be converted into a mosque despite opposition from residents. They say they were mostly concerned about increased traffic in the area. However, during the spring and summer, anonymous flyers were circulated warning that the mosque could draw extremists and radicals. But organizers of the project say the House of Worship will help bring the community together. So in 2004, we put the application into the zoning, and that hearing process, four hearings, took about two years. Around mid of 2005, we finally got the, the permit to build. We then opened our doors on September 22nd of 2006. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. What we are trying to do here is to bring kids here in the Islamic center and um, they are learning how to, how to recite the Holy Quran, how to read the Holy Quran. What is this? Khada Zabar. How we read Khada Zabar? Shabash. And what they do not understand the meaning of it yet. Kids who are regular, who come and their attendance is very good. Rabbuna, Rabbu Sama, Wati, Wal Ardi, Lanadu. They can finish the first time reading in uh, approximately two years. Patija, what, what you are you covering here? We're covering the, like, memorizing the 99 names of Allah. The Maker. Kids are learning how to pray. Allah, what for Allah? Now this gives them opportunity to pray, one prayer at the mosque. On a day when they are off, they are not going to school. Before the mosque was built, we went to one that was kind of far from here, and it was hard to go there. The forehead is on the ground, but the nose is not touching the ground, so that's a must. I was commanded to prostrate on seven bones, the forehead, and he pointed to the nose, and two hands, the two knees, and the toes. So this is Salat 101, learning how to pray. I really don't feel I have to make any adjustments between my Muslim life or my life as a teenager in the United States. I cover at the mosque because I feel more close to God there. Islam is a way of life and I practice it every day no matter where I am. Even if I'm with my friends, I'll get up and I'll go do my prayer. Socially, I tend to ignore like all the pressures that are put on me as like, you know, in high school, a 14 year old girl. I have a lot of non-Muslim friends. Of course they question you like why don't you do this a certain way, but it doesn't they don't like they understand that I'm different from them and they accept it. Our objective is to make sure that they become better citizens, better neighbors, better friends, better relatives. Because this is a character building. 
is the end result that we are trying to trying to produce here. Looking at the today's fast and how many people showed up, I was quite impressed by what I saw there. That's the advantage of a mosque in your community. You can go there, break your fast, pray, come here, have your meal, and go back for a night prayer. What is truly Islam? I believe it's a challenge for the Muslim community to come forward, being in a minority, and work with the majority of the people to really make them understand what it stands for. There is absolutely total prohibition of killing yourself. Outreach effort, when it, in terms of matter, matter of religion, when we are trying to really make people aware of what Islam is, and try to correct people's perceptions about it. And those are the kind of things that we must live by. And this effort, I believe, will continue as long as I can see it. Under a lot of pain, but that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that I take my own life. What would that do? I'm Lorraine Fay from Merchantville, and I'm just here to learn. I'm Zahira Khalil. My husband and I have been members of this congregation from the time it started. I'm Tamara Marsh from Camden City, and I am the chair of the Human Relations Commission in Camden. This is different from traditional interfaith dialogues. Find someone who you don't know, preferably from different backgrounds. I, I'm a doctor. What do you do? I used to be a Coast Guard officer. Okay. The first questions. List similarities and differences amongst your group. This could be religious, it could be your hobbies, it could be your interests. Talk to each other and write it on your large post-it. We're strong in faith. You missed one. We're good-looking people. <laughs> Our differences are that uh, we have different occupations and different cultures, and also we were born in different countries. Number one similarity, we all love the food today. <laughs> said something about different, different how we are, many people are fearful of Muslims, particularly Muslim women, that if they come across them on the street, they'll cross the street. Rejection. Preconceived notions often started in childhood, negative stereotypes. Lack of knowledge of history is very important, I think. Yes. People do not know the past, and as a result, haven't had the chance to learn from it. A mosque is not only a, a building with a roof on. If you go outside the boundary of a building of a mosque, what we find is that how it has galvanized the communities around it. Does everyone have the agenda? Yes. And the we have a draft of the agreement. Here in, in, in South Jersey, we're making our own little local attempt to bridge uh, the, the gap. We dedicate and commit. We are now forming a Catholic Muslim commission. To respect and cooperation between our two communities by promoting a deeper knowledge and respect for each other's history, traditions, and sensitivities. Uh, I'm going to ask again, what do you mean by sensitivities? For example, in Roman Catholicism, Jesus is considered son of God. I have been in some gatherings where somebody might stand up and say, Mr. Rahman, what do you think about Jesus? And I, I may say, well, the first thing I want to tell you is that he is not the son of God like you, you, you believe. And a distinction that this is my belief, which is not necessarily the way I expect the next yes. person to believe. Exactly. So maybe we should just say that deeper knowledge, understanding, and respect for each other's history, traditions, and beliefs. Hmm? And to be we sensitive to yes. poor beliefs. Okay, yeah. right. You know. If I come over for Easter dinner, that's you would right. not serve ham. That's what I was just thinking. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that comes down to a sensitivity and a more day-to-day more -day impact. Yeah. 
R A S P E C T. <laughs> find out what it means, <laughs> it means to me. To it's not just treat people the way you want to be treated. You have to find out how they want to be treated. Make right, an right. effort to find out what is, and that's the sensitivity part. Okay. By providing a deeper knowledge and respect for each other, history, traditions, and religious sense. Yeah, I just put it before, but that, that's fine too. What would you suggest? I said by promoting a, a religious sensitivity, yeah, comma, hold, deeper hold, knowledge. Hold on, hold on. Religious sensitivity means? Deeper knowledge, comma, deep. understanding, and respect for each other's history and traditions. The more that we break down these walls uh, that divide us through education, through opportunities to encounter one another. Nice to see you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much. Always good to see you. I think it, it helps to break down the walls of ignorance. And in that, we recognize in one another that which unites us rather than that which divides us. I was having some difficulty seeing in the left field, and I had a very urgent MRI done, found out the same day that I have a tumor. You don't worry, you just pray for me, uh, because worry is not going to cure me. Worry, worry will just make you feel bad and will make me feel bad. I would tell you this, that I very honestly and frankly tell you, I do not know people who do not have any faith, first of all, how they really weather this kind of a, a news or weather this kind of a storm. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanir Rahim. I have 100 percent, 1,000 percent faith in Allah. He is testing me, and yes, there is no human being who is not going to be tested, one way or another. And this is my test. This is my turn. Amen. I really welcome this forum for us to learn more about Islam, which we need to do, and how our religions and our cultures are, are very similar in, in so many ways, as you will discover. The topic that we picked is Islam explained. The word Islam comes from an Arabic word, which literally means Three words in English, submission, surrender, and obedience. As I was reading the Holy Quran this morning, I was reading a verse which says where Allah, Allah which is the Arabic uh, word for God, Allah says very clearly in there, submit to me in totality, in total. When you do that, submit to me, you become free. If I ask in this room, how many of us submit to the will of God? I have so far not heard one answer from any of the audiences that I have been involved with, where somebody has said, I don't submit to the will of God. What you are showing here does nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, to take away your fear 
of the Muslims who were practicing jihad. If you look at the presentation of Islam as it is stated in the Holy Quran, the scripture, that is the view that I was trying to project here. If they followed the Quran, we'd all be fine. There is a lot of work going on already with respect to the real education of, the, of Islam. I know that I am very tuned to Pakistan because I get a lot of uh, TV coverage at home because I come from there originally. And I tell you there is so much work going on in the country against this. So many lectures, so many educational sessions. How can I see what you see? Where do you get your information? I watch Al Jazeera on my computer. I read that. I read the BBC. I don't see what you're saying, and, yeah. and I'd like to. OK. There are active efforts going on in every country. And you've seen this? Yes. How can we see it? But the issue here is TV coverage, what kind of press you get in, in, in your house. I've gone outside of the local. I've gone to the BBC. I've, Al Jazeera has an English uh, program on, again, on the cable. Again, again, um, Al Jazeera is a, like Is a there CNN. another source? That's yeah. a simple question. The, the, there are sources we, 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 we have. Now, if you give me my, your email, maybe in a very little way, maybe I'll share something with you by email. That might help you a little bit. If I see something that I think is worth showing to you, I, I'll send it to you. And that's all I'm interested in. No miracles, just what's happening. We Muslim being in minority right now, we certainly are isolated, generally speaking, from the rest of the communities. So who is going to really reach out and uh, try to make other people understand who you are, what you do, what kind of belief system you have, what kind of, what kind of cultural diversity that we represent. All these are things that we need to educate other people in order to bridge us with the rest of the community. <laughs> As far as women, when they go to the mosque, we only see pictures of the men praying. Okay. What is the role of the women in in, in the, the the women are not obligatory because of the fact that there are biological things about women. God did not say that you must go to the mosque and pray. Women are not mandated to go there, but. If they want to go there, yes. That's exactly the same in Orthodox yeah, yeah, Judaism. Yeah. Women yeah. are not commanded to do that. Yeah. That's not their obligation. Okay. Yeah. And there are many, many other similarities. Uh, Jewish people pray three times a day, not five yeah. times a yeah. day. So we can see how we are tied together to the same root, Prophet Abraham, the father of all of us. This is what establishes us again, brings us to a common point. Anybody can love the people who loves them. Anybody can feel comfortable with the people who are just like them. That takes no effort. That's nothing. Any bad person can do that. What has always been called good religiously, what has always been called a spiritual strength, is, is learning to love your enemy. Maybe if we could ask the rabbis, yeah. in order to be a Jew, you have to believe certain uh, uh, absolutely. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Or a Muslim. Yeah. You know, when, and that's what we're trying to get at. When I first started trying to dialogue with Muslims before I met Zia and found a political nature to the discussion of Islam or trying to defend it in a political way rather than just dealing with the religious tenants, it became very uncomfortable uh, denying that there was any violence in any way associated with Islam. If uh, suicide is against your religion, aren't the people who are suicide bombers and people who are, are uh, training them to be that way uh, disbelievers? I cannot uh, be judgmental about it. I, again, I cannot say a given person is a disbeliever or a believer because that will be judgmental. All I can say to you is that according to the, the, the principles of Islam, it teaches peace and you must love your life. This life is not yours. You must respect it. 
And if you take the decision of wasting it in that fashion, I must say that you are not following the, the principles of Islam. Now, whether the person is a disbeliever or whether he's going to go to heaven or hell, I, I cannot make that determination. The trouble is maybe that uh, many Muslims are not judgmental enough against the people who are doing these kind of things. All I can say is that if somebody was making an attempt under the laws of Sharia, if somebody was making an attempt to take suicide, certainly he, he should be, if I was running that country, certainly the person will be jailed and punished. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Zia thank you, and thanks. Zahida. Thank you. Thanks, thanks to you for listening to me. And if I hurt your feelings, I apologize to you. Uh, and if I said anything good, it all belongs to, all praises are to him, to God. Well, you're a good friend. Yeah, I thought you did an yeah. excellent job. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've got a tough crowd here. Part of my upset is that the Muslim community does not voice its displeasure. You understand? Because you are as displeased as any human being who hates violence that has no basis. And I believe you should be outspoken in uh, your objection to what the fundamentalists are doing. And on that note, I'm going home. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was very nice player. To Thank meet you very you. much. It's not about what others are going to do, it's about what I'm going to do. I'm doing what I need to do. You and you're so going to do what you're going to do. What you can do is you can you, you can do what we just did to right now. Wonderful. wonderful. And then we should do more. And then we should do more. Maybe we, we should go to another community. The next time you want to come to the mosque. Thank you. Thank you. The idea here is to really try yeah. to share with people what little I know about the faith that I believe in and try to clear any perceptions or misperceptions that they may have. Uh, how successful one is in terms of clearing those perceptions or negative perceptions, only God can tell. Because it's a, it's a game of the heart. What I was hearing in the news and the media, there is something in teachings of Islam that is making people do this because people are being indoctrinated that if they did this kind of behavior, I mean commit suicide, that they will earn the paradise. That, uh, and that is why these people are, you know, wrapping themselves with ammunition and blowing up buildings like uh, what happened on 9-11. How can I hear all this? and sit here in my house, have my breakfast, have my lunch, have my dinner, enjoy my life, and not do anything about it. That, that's some conscious awakening thing. It's a wake up call, Zia Rahman, get up, and do something about it. And it just happened to coincide, and then the zoning board hearing here, and with the opposition, was another scenario that was repeating in my own life. And I said, my God, that even multiplied my, my interest into this that I need to do it much sooner than later. So all this combined, you know, put together, made me do what I'm trying to do now. I'm looking to Allah to give me full, uh, uh, full cure in this, that uh, what, uh, whatever I had, that uh, it, it doesn't come back. So it had made me humble and uh, uh, begin to reflect on life and see the shortness of it. You, you don't know how quickly one can go away. Because when one dies, there is no chance to improve on their deeds, on their behaviors. This is the time to do it.
Funding for this program was provided by One Nation, a philanthropic collaborative.